This episode of The Unstarving Musician is powered by Liner Notes. Learn from the hundreds of musicians and industry professionals I've spoken with for The Unstarving Musician on topics such as marketing, songwriting, touring, sync licensing, and much more. Sign up for Liner Notes at unstarvingmusician.com. It's an email newsletter from yours truly in which I share some of the best knowledge gems garnered from the many conversations featured on The Unstarving Musician. You'll also be privy to the latest podcast episodes and liner notes subscriber exclusives. Sign up at unstarvingmusician.com. It's free and you can unsubscribe at any time. This is The Unstarving Musician. I'm Rabonzo. This is my podcast. It features conversations with indie music artists and industry professionals and me, all intended to help Indie music artists better understand the marketing, business, and creative processes that empower us to do more of what we love, make music. Welcome to another episode. How are you? I hope you're having great weather, feeling good about yourself and life. And uh, yeah, thanks for being here. This episode is a little late. My apologies. The wife and I are traveling for our anniversary. I'm currently in Napa Valley with the wife. We started in Salt Lake City, but we'll finish our trip in Los Gatos, California, seeing many friends along the way. Thought I'd have this one out on time, on schedule, but alas, our wine tasting, food pairing follies interfered with my plans. You understand, I'm sure. Before I get to my guest today, I want to remind you the unstarving musician needs your support, and your support equals love. Go to unstarvingmusician.com forward slash support to learn about the many ways of showing your love. We appreciate it. I appreciate it. Yes, so my guest today is Alicia Van Sant, founding member and lead singer of The WAG. I was introduced to Alicia by her bandmate Joshua Van Ness, who was featured in episodes 257 and 134. We had a great time talking. She loves to laugh and just comes across as a very pleasant and fine human being. You'll hear it in her voice, in our conversation. The WAG has been going for over 20 years, so cheers to Alicia and the WAG. These days, they have the luxury of being choosy about the shows they play, and Alicia says they're busy all the time. That's amazing. Kudos to them. On a side note, Alicia mentioned in our conversation that she feels she sings better in heels. There's a story behind that comment, which you'll hear in our conversation, but when I was re-listening, doing some editing, I recalled that I was going to ask a vocal coach about this phenomenon of feeling that she sings better in heels. So I did. So Alicia, if you're listening, I did talk to my friend Judy Rodman, vocal coach, singer, producer, who is based in Nashville. She's got quite the resume. And she says that there are a couple of reasons. So she says women tend to sing better in heels. They are most used to wearing because it affects the length of their Achilles tendon. And then For instance, she says Dolly and her sisters, Dolly Pardon, I presume, experience discomfort when not wearing heels for long periods of time. And for her, for Judy, she says, I do better in lower heels. My tendons would be longer from going barefoot so much. You can sort of piece all this together, I'm sure. But she says good vocal technique includes singing from the heels. Higher heels can, if the wearer is used to them, actually balance the person's body weight back on the heels. She adds, what you have to watch out for is wearing heels that somehow cause you to lean forward, which may happen if you're not used to wearing them. So no, it's not a figment of your imagination, Alicia. It's physical. Judy says she's doing great. She's working on a musical that had been on the back burner for a long time. She sounds super excited. Judy, I hope if you're listening that that goes amazing. And thanks for responding to the question. So there you have it. The WAG has very recently released a new album called Blue Bottles and Copper Coins, and they are about to perform a Beatles tribute show, which comes up on July 14, 2023, for you future listeners. And they have a stint in the UK coming up, a tour, which is amazing. I don't recall if it's their first, but I believe it's the first time for Joshua Van Ness, their drummer, who's not been with them all 20 years. So I know he's excited. And you can find all their tour dates, and you can even find a link to take you where you can get tickets for the Beatles tribute show if you happen to hear this in time by going to thewagband.com forward slash shows. The full link for that Beatles tribute show will be in the show notes for you in case you want to do that. And so in this conversation, Alicia and I talk about happiness and longevity of the WAG, her band, singing better in heels, of course, 
uh, performing the music of the Beatles, the story behind their new album, Blue Bottles and Copper Coins, making merch with something called the Cricket, which I had never heard of until somewhat recently, but apparently Alicia's Cricket Crazy and makes all kinds of merch with it. We also chat about the Moody Blues, who Alicia finds very inspiring. And we talk about Star Trek and Lord of the Rings. Yes, Alicia is a sci-fi nerd, but so am I. So it was kind of fun. I hope you enjoy this conversation. And, and here it is, me talking to Alicia Van Sant. Where? I forget where you live. New Jersey. So you're in the East Coast. Yes. New Jersey. Did you grow up there? I did. I grew up in South Jersey. And then uh, when my hubby and I got engaged, I moved up into Central Jersey, which does exist. And um, I've been here ever since. Wow. How long ago was that? You got engaged or whatever, moved there? Uh, got engaged just over 27 years ago. Wow. You and guys are like me and my wife. Yeah. We'll be married 25 years next month. Mm, we're going on... 29 in uh yeah next month. When, when, so you're in june too what's the date yeah the 20th mm. We're what the are thir you? third oh that's my dad's birthday <laughs> <laughs> wow i knew we were gonna hit something in coming yeah. <laughs> small world <laughs> wow so what's the weather like there right now it's actually a little cold right now for me it's like it was like 57 i think which wouldn't be too bad if it weren't windy but it's windy so i don't like it and i have closed all the windows <laughs> So yeah. you, you started doing music in central Jersey, right? Yeah, sort of, kind of. I mean, when I really started, started, I was about 11 years old at home, just, you know, playing keyboard with my dad, just in our living room, not professionally. But yeah, I didn't start doing, I wasn't in a band or anything until Brian and I got together and, uh, and formed our band, The Wag. And Brian is which one? He's the bassist. Okay. Yeah. yeah, the lanky dude, the, the <laughs> yeah, tall lanky, lanky dude. dude. <laughs> <laughs> That's the one, the one that makes all the rest of us look really short. <laughs> Is he? But I mean, you know, he just looks tall. I haven't really like yeah. super noticed who's tall and who's not. So who's the who's the yeah. least tall? He, oh, well, that would be me. Thanks okay. a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, Brian is like about six three, I think. Oh, wow. Yeah, and you know, being on the thinner side makes him look even taller. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, and then I think, uh, I don't know who's who's next to all this, Don or Joshua. I, I want to say Don, our guitarist, but it could be Joshua or drummer. I don't know. And then I'm just average height for a woman. I'm 5'6", but the rest of them make me look short. Do you wear, do you, do you wear uh, heels or anything when you, when you perform? You know, I do. Um, I hate wearing them. I can't even sit in heels, much less stand or walk around or dance or anything. But <laughs> <laughs> seriously, I, I like I prefer to be barefoot. Somehow I manage and I honestly find and I don't know if this is just all in my head, but I honestly find that wearing heels makes me sing better. I don't know if it like I know. Isn't that well, weird? yeah, like, I'm guess I'm gonna guess here. It it, it uh, somehow gets you to work your core because the balance is just a little bit off, <laughs> and yeah. then you're, like you're suddenly like breathing through through the right places. I, maybe that, or like it just lengthens the whole everything. I don't know, but yeah, I just I feel like it makes me sing better. And then like there was this one time when Joshua was doing a um, a solo thing, but we went to see him, and the band that was supposed to be on after him was late. And Brian and I were there. So he said, hey, fellow bandmates, come on up and sing with me. So we did White Rabbit. I can't sing that knot in heels. And I was wearing my Converse sneakers. <laughs> I, <laughs> it took everything I had to sing it because I wasn't wearing heels. That is so crazy. <laughs> you should ask a vocal yeah. coach about that sometime and see if they say, I don't know, it's in your head probably. It probably is. A lot of things are. <laughs> I'm going to ask one that I know. I'll, I'll let you know what she says. <laughs> okay, cool. <laughs> so... I was reading your, your bio on the band website and I, mm -hmm. it, it compels me to ask if you're an odd duck in your family. Uh, I think my entire family is an odd duck. Okay. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I guess everyone sort of thinks that about their family, yeah. but you don't, you don't stick out so much, huh? <laughs> no, I don't, I don't think so. <laughs> what, what compelled you to ask that from reading my bio? <laughs> oh, you're just, you're all the classic stereotypical kind of daughter quirky things like vegan. <laughs> you watch quirky shows you're into the moody <laughs> blues you follow will oh, yeah. wheaton <laughs> oh yeah 
I read, um, I'm like, oh, Will Wheaton, I know who he is. So I went yeah. to his website and like started reading his, the first blog post at the top. I think it's called There Is No Middle. And and uh, I, I, it made me laugh, but uh, I totally relate. But I'm like, wow, this guy's pissed off. <laughs> oh, he, yeah, he went through a lot when he was young. I, I didn't read that latest blog post, so I don't know exactly what it's about. But I know that he went through a whole lot when he was young with his family. He doesn't speak to his parents anymore. No, that's so, Yeah. That's too bad. Yeah, poor guy. Well, speaking of families, the WAG has a long history. I understand. Oh, yeah. Talking to Joshua the second time. Yeah. Yeah. At some of most of it's good. A little bit of it is tragic. Uh, but, you know, we're on an upswing again. I, did he go into all the details? Um, He did talk about the loss of a bandmate and... Yeah. Um, and his first, <laughs> this was kind of funny. I was thinking about it this morning. He said he got kind of offended the first time he heard you guys because you were so happy and he was like in such a bad <laughs> place. He's like, this is bullshit. That's not real. <laughs> yeah. No, I remember him saying that. I, I did listen to that. I remember him saying that. But yeah, you know, it's funny because especially the older I get, and I probably shouldn't say this, but the older I get when we're getting ready to go to a gig, I'm like, oh, I don't feel like going. I just want to stay in my jammies and watch TV, you know. I'm such a, a pain in the neck, really. But then we get there and it doesn't matter what kind of mood I was in before. It doesn't matter how lazy I feel, nothing. As soon as we get there and we start, I'm like, woohoo, this is awesome. Let's go. And it's just, it's the best thing ever. It can really bring you, or at least me, and I guess the rest of my bandmates out of any kind of funk that we're in. If we just have so much fun just playing, you know, our own music as well as cover songs that we love and just being together like being in our band really is being in a family and like I'm going to choke myself up now this is ridiculous but it, it really is being in a family and you know we can fight like family sometimes too but we absolutely love each other and there's nothing better than being together on stage with those guys that's funny uh, you know at the same time i mean it's it's funny because i i know exactly what you mean it's funny how that happens you can be in yeah you know i can be on the way to a gig and be feel pretty good but definitely when you when you get on there and get going or for me anyway it's it's much the same uh and then the other side of me is like uh -huh, so you're the annoying happy one that gets everyone <laughs> Well, the four of us really are in our band. <laughs> <laughs> now that's good. Uh, Joshua seems like he's very positive, upbeat all the time. Um, yeah. I mean, that's just the way he tries to be. Whether he, whether he actually is all the time on the inside, that's another story. But he definitely comes. He projects that outwardly. You know. No, I think he really is. I mean, I've seen him. You know, going through hard stuff or just not necessarily being in the best of moods or whatever. But you know, we just all bring each other up, really. Does it ever at times feel strange how long the band's been going? I, I mean, or do you, or do you have any sort of reflective <sighs> thoughts from time to time about like, wow, this has been going on a long time? Yeah, sort of in in the um in the sense that sometimes Brian and I, because we've been in it the longest, we founded it. Um, we talk sometimes about, wow, can you believe that? Like, we used to do, you know, play in a bar until one o'clock in the morning, like. <laughs> I can't even look at one o'clock in the morning anymore. So, but <laughs> seriously, but so like we used to do that kind of stuff and we are doing completely different kinds of gigs now. And we're like, what a long way we've come, you know? I, and I'm not, I'm not saying that it's a bad thing to do those kind of gigs that we used to do. It's just, it, we're totally different now, you know, and to anybody that is still doing that kind of thing, you know, good on you. I just can't do it anymore. But yeah, we have definitely gone, come a long, long way. Yeah. That's nice to hear. I know. And yeah. I relate to that too, <laughs> <laughs> especially as a drummer. I'm like, really? Okay. I need to get on that whole learning the bass thing. Cause this lugging a, a drum kit around is for the birds. I'm too oh. old. <laughs> yeah. See, do you have to do that by yourself though? Because we never talk about it really or anything, but in our band, Nobody just sits there on your butt. If you're done loading in and somebody else is still loading in, you help. Like we all help each other. We all carry stuff. I may be the only lady in the band and I may be smaller than everybody else, but I absolutely carry my weight. Like nobody can say anything bad about that, about any of us, really. We always help each other. Yeah, that's that's mostly how it's been Yeah. in my life. Um, but I've played in so many ensembles and very mm. few of them have lasted my history and in, in them have 
none of yeah. them have lasted as long as you guys have. I mean, I played in, I, I've been like the Joshua where I came into this band that's been going like 20 more years yeah. or something. Um, and I played in bands for like around five years or so. And, and those are probably, it seems like with time, and, well, it's funny. It's the extremes. <laughs> with time, a band, you just get that way with each other. You know, you help each other yeah. out a lot more. And then there's the other extreme. I used to do a lot of subbing like Joshua does as well mm -hmm. if i remember correctly and yeah and uh, a lot of times these guys are like so happy and um appreciative that you helped them out that they're like what can i carry you know <laughs> so, or oh, the wow. occasional or the occasional fan that's the best and they're like what can i take out to the car you oh know? yeah yeah we get that a lot um like my mom sometimes if she comes to a show or just some of our, our regulars you know and we always tell them don't worry first of all you've come to see us and we appreciate that and that's enough and also we have this down to a science. And if you touch anything, we're not going to know where this thing is or where that thing is. So just, it's fine. Just leave it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, like, thank you, but no, thank you. <laughs> yeah. I have a, yeah, I have a rule of people are helping me. Okay. Just stage it at the end of the, you know, at the, at the, 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 I want to say cajuela. That's the Spanish word, you know, like the, uh, the, the gate, whatever the tailgate, the, the end of the truck, just <laughs> stage it there on the ground. I'm going to put it in. I got a system. Yeah, oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> is that how you say tailgate? Cajuela? Uh, yeah, I think that's what they use for like the trunk. They don't yeah. really have a differentiation between like a trunk and and uh, a tail. You know, is that what we call them? I can't even remember on like an yeah, on like an on, SUV? A, on a truck. Yeah. Uh, no hatchback. I think you're thinking of on maybe. an SUV. Or... That sounds like a compact, like a Prius thing. Well, it does. It does. <laughs> I don't but, know. Yeah. <laughs> but I don't think they have a different word. They just call it cajuela here in Mexico, anyway. <laughs> well, now I have to look it up. Yeah. I I love languages and stuff, and now I need to. What did we call it? We called it a tailgate. I'm going to look it up right now. Live. Yeah. <laughs> uh, nope, it didn't have one. <laughs> that's funny. Google yeah. doesn't have one anyway. Um, you, you know, and that's it's so regional here. I'm not I'm maybe <clears throat> I'm sure it's not that much different in the States, but there are so many regional words. Uh, mm. And I'm learning more about that. I <clears throat> recently started doing Spanish lessons. So I feel like I've plateaued. And yeah, we're, we're always talking about, you know, and I went to Monterrey, Mexico this last week, and I can just tell they're different words in different areas oh sure so speak you guys have done so many gigs in your long history what's the weirdest gig you've ever played <laughs> you know i actually have an answer <laughs> i don't even remember what year it was it was about a thousand years ago we were playing at i don't know why but we were playing in this clothing store that i guess was just opening i don't remember in fairhaven new jersey and i used to work in fairhaven not at that store but they hired us to play in this store and we were literally in the middle of a clothing rack, like, <laughs> like, like one of those round ones and it had clothes on it. And the four of us somehow shoved ourselves in the middle of this clothing rack and played. That's all I remember about it. But that was absolutely the weirdest gig I've ever played. Oh my gosh. That is strange. Where, uh, no wild crowd or any backstage shenanigans at that one? No, we're, <laughs> no, <laughs> not at any of them. <laughs> oh man. Yeah. I usually miss the wild shenanigans sitting back on a drum kit. Cause well, depends on the stage, but you know, a lot of these stages are such that there's somebody almost, if not directly in front of me, like blocking my view yeah. of what's happening outside. So yeah, either fighting or girls doing things I wished I would have seen, but I didn't, you know? <laughs> No, I, we don't get too many, I don't think, wild shenanigans. I, I just don't think we're that kind of band that attracts wild shenanigan -y people. But I do remember one time playing. It was actually at a bar, but it was earlier. And there was a, a bridal shower party thing happening. And all of a sudden, Brian said to me, he turns to me and he goes, just don't look over there. Don't look over in the corner. And I trust him, obviously. So I just didn't look. And later he told me it was because the bride was puking, which was awesome. <laughs> and... I'm an emetophobe, which means I can't stand anything having to do with that. Even if it's fake on TV, I can't watch it. So I'm glad he told me not to look. <laughs> <laughs> Don't look over there. No. <laughs> wow. So you guys have a an interesting thing. And, and it's not that unusual, I guess. But so you, you released uh, a new album of original material. And, mm -hmm. and, and it's not the first, right? You guys have done other oh, no. original albums before. And, and yeah. you do a lot of cover gigs in the form of tribute shows and you have one coming up that's probably pretty big a beatles tribute like in a yes july 14th at the vogel in red bank which is like part of the count basie uh theater in red bank okay and uh yeah we're very excited about that we're um 
I don't remember how long the show is. I want to say it's like an hour, something like that. But so we'll be doing earlier Beatles and later Beatles, but we're opening the show for ourselves. So we're going to do like a, I think it's like a 25, maybe 30 minute set of our own music first. Nice. nice. Yeah. <laughs> and then, then we change over and we, uh, we do the Beatles. Nice. So do you guys, what do you typically try to deliver in terms of the experience? Are you like one of these dress up tribute bands or do you just go out there and nail the music um, as best you can? Or Well, kind of a little from column A and a little from column B. So obviously I don't look like any of the Beatles. I don't think any of us really do, but especially me. So we will wear some costumey kind of things like the Shea Stadium jackets. Mm -hmm. nice. um, I need to see pictures of that, by the way. You need to see pictures. I will send you some pictures um, uh, from the gig. <laughs> okay. Okay. I mean, we have previous gigs too, but so even not Beatles gigs, we all like to dress up. We all feel like, and I don't mean this against the audience, but we feel like we should be dressed a little bit better than the audience. Like we don't like to go on stage in jeans and a t-shirt jeans. Okay. Depending on, on the show, but still a nice shirt. And I tend to dress in skirts or dresses. Um, so for the Beatles thing, when we wear the Shea Stain and jackets, the guys will all be in black pants. I'll have a skirt on. <laughs> I don't think any of the Beatles wore a skirt, not that I remember. But so we'll do that. And then there may or may not be some Sergeant Pepperidge happening. Nice. But none of us wear wigs. You know, none of us are trying to look like the Beatles. We're just trying to, you know, to honor them and, and their legacy and all of their music and, and all of the happiness that they brought fans. <laughs> that's great that's great Thank i like you. it well let's talk about the new album blue bottles and copper coins first of all where Ooh. does that title come from i knew you were gonna ask that <laughs> uh brian actually came up with that it's really hard to come up with an album title and brian came up with that and if i remember correctly he said i cannot remember what he said he said something about it what i think the copper coins bring good luck and the blue bottles do something else. And I probably should have asked him before we got on this call. If he listens to this, he's going to be, oh, man, in a palm. He's going to kill Face palm. <laughs> yeah. But so it, it means something. I just can't remember what it means. So what's the, <laughs> what's the story behind the album as a whole? Well, you know, there was this little thing called COVID. And... Um, you know, everybody, had, I'm not much of a writer, so I don't really do much of the actual writing of the songs, but I, I contribute in ways of like of harmony of, of um, not organizing, what's the word, arranging, uh, you know, that sort of thing. But the, the three guys were, you know, they all have ideas and stuff always going around their heads at all times. And so with COVID happening and we couldn't get together and we couldn't see each other, that meant we couldn't rehearse, we couldn't play gigs, everybody sitting home. So we have all this time. So they're all, you know, coming up with all these ideas and they actually have time to develop them. So then everybody started texting, you know, to the band chat, texting stuff, you know, these different ideas and these little snippets and voice memos. And what do you think of this? And Hey, why don't you write a piece to that? And it just snowballed and we got an album out of it. <laughs> and when we were finally able, well, actually, I was going to say when we were finally able to get back together, we recorded it. But actually, most of the recording took place separately. And then when we were able to get together, we did do some couple of redos because like there was a little pop in this thing or something went wrong with that or whatever. So we, we got an album out of it. So that was pretty cool. Was it all home studio done? And did you guys master it yourselves? Uh, yes, it was all home studio done. We did do a couple of vocals. I think at a friend's studio, but his is like, it's a home studio, but it's super duper professional. It's really cool. Uh, but we did not master it ourselves. We used to, but we decided, especially Brian, because he takes on most of the technical stuff. We kind of decided, you know what, let's let somebody else have a crack at it because once you hear a song 80 gazillion times, the 80 gazillion and first sounds exactly the same. Like you need to let somebody else do it. So that's what we did. Right. And they have all like the special speakers and stuff. So they can just sort of like hear right. every little <laughs> detail. I always wonder right. how many people that do that or the the producers who are working on the actual audio of it, 
take it out and listen to it on a car stereo or something or just you know what i mean instead of like like, like do they all just sit in their studio with their oh. badass speakers and that that's the whole you know the whole process is done there and the, versus the ones that'll listen to it on crappy gear to see what it sounds like <laughs> i don't know about other people but i know that brian for sure and you know me too sometimes will listen to it and, and no the whole band really has listened to our stuff like when we were before we actually made the album like when we were still writing it and recording it and everything listen to it on car stereos on crappy home stereos on the computer on you know through earbuds the, all different kinds of ways to see how it would sound you mentioned the pandemic i'm not even sure mm -hmm. if you said the word no you said COVID. i think i did <laughs> um and i talked to well i was editing an episode for a conversation i had recently with a guitar player the guitarist of a band that's based out of australia excuse me um oh my god argentina oh. <laughs> and, and uh she they had a very similar sort of thing happen they ended up you know writing material during the pandemic they couldn't get out and play they're kind of they, they were kind of a new band during that time Ooh. too and it just struck me when you said it too and and actually when i was listening re-listening to my conversation with her that uh, how much we're still talking about the pandemic on just on this podcast and yeah and it seems to be spiking recently and probably because the labor <laughs> of a lot of people's oh. work during that period you know the the making new music is sort of like getting released i suppose i don't know maybe it's just coincidence, yeah but crazy well at least something good came out of it you know a lot of new music a lot of new art a lot of new sourdough bread <laughs> <You> know, <laughs> <laughs> right <laughs> Uh, you know what? I almost forgot to put this question down, but I would be remiss. I think that you may have forgotten about it as well. But I was supposed to ask you about that cricket machine that you use because oh. you guys, you guys, because you, you know guys what? were doing I got so. A new one. Oh, nice! So, did you get the latest one or something? The, the... no, actually. So back whew, when did I get the first one? I don't know. There, there are a number of different models. So I got one called the Explore Air Two, um, like three years ago, I think, and that's the one that I've been using, and I love it, and I love it. At the same time that that was released, they had one called the Maker. I didn't get the Maker because it was more expensive. And I knew if I got that one, which can do like 300 more things than the Explorer Air 2, that I would just spend all my money on supplies, which I do anyway. So I didn't get that one. Well, now they've released a new model of the Explorer Air and a new model of the Maker. So now the original Maker is much cheaper and Costco had it on super duper sale in a bundle with all kinds of extra tools and vinyl and blah, blah, blah. So I got that for my birthday. So now oh, I have nice. two of them. <laughs> when was your birthday? May 7th. Mine was the 10th. Yeah. Oh, get out. Happy birthday. <laughs> <laughs> Same to you. Happy to be related. So you're a, you. you're a Taurus as well, eh? Yes, I am. <laughs> and anybody who knows me tell, will tell you that I am stubborn. <laughs> so I definitely fulfill that part of it anyway. Stubborn, but not mean, right? I try not to be. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, so for anyone who was like me when Joshua mentioned this whole cricket thing, you guys use mm -hmm. it to, well, I don't know what you use it for outside of this, but you use it for a lot of merch production for the band. And like yeah. You have a, you have a it sounded like, like I don't really, you, I'm sure you're going to elaborate some, but it sounded like you put a, a logo on everything and anything. Pretty much. I'll slap a logo on somebody's face if they let me. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, so our friend Ken Frederick made this really pretty, well, he made a number of different logos and he actually, he does our website too, but. Uh, he made a number of different WAG logos. And my favorite one is, um, we call it the WAG flower logo. It's got this really pretty flower as part of it. Mm -hmm. um, so the t-shirts that we have, I don't make, we you know buy those, we outsource those. Um, but so I make mugs because with the Cricut, you, they have this stuff called infusible ink. It's sublimation basically. And it's a long involved thing, which I won't go into. But so anyway, so I make these mugs with the logo and it can be like, it can be any different pattern or color or whatever they have that's available. So like galaxy print or like a bandana print or just anything. So I make the mugs and then I do keychains with vinyl. So it can be any color. What else? Oh, and then I have just, you know, the vinyl logos. If you want to slap one on the car, I do other stuff too. And of course now I can't think of it, but. What's the most popular merch item that you guys uh, have? Well, I mean, I, I want to say the music, the CDs, <laughs> besides but besides that, that um, honestly, I think it might be the mugs, which is exciting for me because since I pay for all the supplies, I get to keep all that money. <laughs> yeah. So like with, with the CDs, with the t-shirts, the with um, whatever else we have that I'm not making, that money all goes back to the band. So 
That's cool. I, the mugs, I get to keep it. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I was reading about merch some months ago, and and it seems real obvious, but it was something I hadn't given much thought to. But uh, different bands or artists have to sort of think about their audience, their followers and supporters. What mm. would they like? Like yours might be a coffee mug crowd, and mine might be a hoodie crowd, or whatever you know the case may be. Yeah. But it was advice, you know, that they were saying. You know, you need to think about what your people would buy. Probably, I'm guessing that people who do merch probably sort of think about that, whether it's subconsciously or they were like being super um, strategic about it. But Yeah, uh, I would love to do hoodies, but it would just be so expensive. I, whether I did them or, you know, we outsourced it or whatever, mm -hmm. it would just be so expensive. And I just don't want a garage full of hoodies. So the merch, it sounds yeah. like it does contribute to the monetary well-being of the band at least to a degree i don't know how much but it seems it does okay huh yeah i think so i mean you know we have to put out for the cds so right now we're still or for the cds and the vinyl so and for the t-shirts so right now we're you know still paying ourselves back for that but obviously you charge more than what you actually paid to get them made so you know at some point we will make it back and then hopefully earn a little bit of a profit but when we get paid, you know, for gigs and stuff, that sort of thing goes right back into the band, which is how we can do, keep doing more things. So, you know, you have to spend money to make money kind of thing. Sure. It's like that. So you, had you done vinyl before this? last? No, album? no. And that was Joshua's idea. I give him all the credit for that. I was, <laughs> I told you I'm a stubborn Taurus. I was like, no, absolutely not. That's a ridiculous idea. Nobody's going to buy it. Nobody <laughs> has a turntable anymore. Nobody even <laughs> buys CDs anymore. Like, and people are buying it. So, uh, you know, I will freely admit when I'm wrong. And I was wrong about that. A lot of people liked it. So, yay. Yeah, yeah. Well, and Joshua and I might have had the conversation, but people, when they like your band, they just want, some piece of memorabilia and sometimes yeah. it sometimes the cd or the the vinyl is what they really appreciate yeah and specifically with vinyl you know a lot of people just like vinyl anyway and you know the artwork on on the uh album cover of course is much bigger than the artwork on the cd cover so if they wanted to they could you know frame that put it on their wall or something and you can actually see it as opposed to this little, what is it, five by five or whatever CD that's a little bit harder to see. Yeah. I assume that people can hear the, the new album on the streaming services, but can they like go to your website and buy the order the vinyl if they're like out of town and have it sent to them? They absolutely can, and I highly encourage them to do so. <laughs> All right. So <laughs> yes, the one, they definitely one you, can. Yeah, so the one you guys are looking for is blue blue bottles and copper coins, and, and it, mm -hmm. it's available on wagband.com, right? Yeah, thewagband.com. So, I'm sorry, I'm staring right at it, too. That's okay. <laughs> thewagband.com. <laughs> yeah, a lot of people get our actual name wrong, so we're just called The Wag, mm -hmm. and it's capital T-H-E and capital W and then lowercase A-G, so The Wag. But a lot of people, because I guess because our website is The Wag Band, we've been called so many things, but we get called the wag band a lot. It's not our name. It's just the wag. You know, just I did, wag. I did the same thing and it's, it's probably something about the, I want to say the phonetics. That's probably not the right word, but about the way it rolls off the tongue or yeah. maybe the brain. I don't know. That's funny. Um, yeah. yeah, but I think I did that when I was talking, talking to, <laughs> to Josh last time. Yeah. So among the uh, things I'd read in your bios that you're, your favorite band is the Moody Blues used to be the Monkees. So is there, are there things about the Moody Blues that inspire their way into your music or, or what you do as a performer, or singer, instrumentalist? I just want to be as good as them. <laughs> <laughs> really? I mean, their music is just oh, so gorgeous and, and it just gets me going. Like depending on the song, like question, Gets me going, the story in your eyes, which we actually do. The other one. Um, I know you're out there somewhere. Oh, I love that one. We used to do that one a long time ago. But, man, they just get me going. I love them so much. And at one point, Brian was writing songs. This was a number of years ago now, like 12, 13, no, 15 something years ago. I don't remember when we really or when we were doing um, our CD Returning Traveler. And Brian was writing songs. And he was going to write one for me to sing. And he asked me 
you know, I'm going to write a song for you to sing. What sort of vein would you like it to be in? And I said, the Moody Blues. So he wrote a song called Your Eyes. And it doesn't sound, it doesn't sound like we're copying them, but it's definitely reminiscent of them. And we've had a number of people, first of all, so many people tell us, this is my song, or, you know, as a couple, this is our song. It really touched a lot of people, which is awesome. But I have a lot of friends, you know, and fans of our band that are also fans of the Moody Blues, a lot that I've met through the Moody Blues, or not through the Moody Blues, but from, you know, going to Moody's concerts. And they all say, you know, this sounds like it could have been a Moody song. So well done, Brian. Yeah. But uh, so, yeah, it kind of worked its way into into our music in that way. So I never thought about this, but back in their day, did they eventually get lumped in a, into the prog rock category or were they something else? Because I know they sort of happened before yeah. prog rock, didn't they? Before that, became I believe thing. so. Yes. But yes, they have been lumped into the prog rock category for sure. Which, you know, whatever, whatever floats your boat. I just love them for who they are. Yeah. You know, I'm going to tell you something kind of funny. And it's similar to how long it took me to figure out what the hell uh, (laughs) K-pop was. But um, I actually like, you know, prog rock and uh, and Mm -hmm. a lot of it anyway. But for the longest time, I mean, the longest time I didn't know. I was like, what is this, a scene out of prog? I'm like, and finally I'm like, ah, progressive (laughs) rock. (laughs) Oh my god! Uh, Prague is in Prague, Czechoslovakia. Yeah, <laughs> I literally thought oh, that. Oh, that's for a great. Uh, anyway, you know other influences of things that you love. Do you like any of the sci-fi, you know, Star Trek, Lord of the Rings? <gasps> make you think about? <gasps> oh, does that dude, come into your music? Are you kidding? I could talk about them all day. I don't know if it comes out in the music because, as I said, I'm not really so much of the writer. But I will sit here and talk to you about Star Trek and Lord of the Rings all day. In fact, as I sit here, I'm looking at a Peter Jackson book right now. Like, it's right in front of me. (laughs) I absolutely love both of those. Well, they're not genres, but both of those things and talk about them all day. (laughs) You know, the (laughs) so I I watched all the Star Trek original series and several of the Mm -hmm. movies and some of the spinoffs. I think the only spinoff I, well, I shouldn't say that because there have been some newer ones. But, like, Mm -hmm. I never watched Deep Space Nine and... There's been some, or, or or Enterprise, I think, was another one I didn't watch. But, yeah. But anyway, I watched the first and second, I guess, spinoff series. Yeah, The Next Generation. The, yeah, and then maybe all the movies, I guess. So, yeah. Um, so, yeah, I'm a fan. It's kind of funny. I I, I made a, a friend kind of laugh for a second that he knew I was messing with him, but he was talking, we, we were talking about um, Star Wars came up, mm-hmm. and he was, I don't know, he was <laughs> geeking out on telling us something, and. And me and my wife were standing there, and I'm like, and I, I said to him, me and Sammy aren't really into Star Trek. And he, just, <laughs> he, just look, he just looked at me like, and then he, <laughs> then he smiled. <laughs> oh, that's great. Well, I'm not actually really into Star Wars myself that much. I'll go and see the movies if Ryan wants to go see them, but eh. But Star Trek, oh yeah. And The Next Generation is my absolute favorite series of them. That was pretty, that's the one Will Wheaton was in, right? Yes. Was, okay, yeah. Yep, yeah, no, that's the one. Yeah, that was a good show. I enjoyed it. Um, I do like the Star Wars stuff, but I'm, <clears throat> I'm sort of, probably kind of done with it because it's all on Disney, and I have watched a little bit of, mm. of their latest series, and I, I am intrigued about the latest thing they did because I heard the director on Mark Maron's podcast, and it sounded, he he put so much work into it. I wanted, I just mm-hmm. wanted to see it, so much of his life into it. But I think you know, I guess it's. Yeah, finished or or he's finished maybe, oh, but I don't know. Uh, but I'll I may never see it. The only reason I saw any of them was because I signed up for a like a month long Disney thing intro mm-hmm. Disney thing so I could see that Beatles movie that came out. That's what we did too, <laughs> and then we canceled it a week later. Mm-hmm. And then I was <laughs> like, I back up I love the Beatles, but I was like, man, they could have just made that a hour and a half show. <laughs> yeah, there was a little bit of filler, I think. But my older brother, they just they watch it over and over and over. Really? And, yeah. <laughs> like all the all the boring part, the parts that I was like, you know, I, I can't even hear what they're saying. You know. But yeah. Anyway, I do thought, you have uh, a favorite part? Because I have a favorite part. But I don't well, know I mean, the parts honestly, the parts <laughs> where they're actually fleshing the songs out, where there's a lot of that, and I enjoy <laughs> when Billy Preston kind of comes into the scene. Yeah. What about you? <laughs> My favorite part was when Ringo farted. <laughs> See, I missed that. I don't know. I didn't catch that. <laughs> it's so funny. That's hilarious. Oh, 
that's hilarious. I should be a serious musician, but I'm not. Fart jokes and stuff like that are never not funny. <laughs> I miss that. I miss that part. I'll have to look for that on oh, you YouTube. Oh, you gotta watch it. Yeah, there's so much of it on YouTube. So many clips of it, and oh. yeah. and I felt like, like you know I'd seen a lot of it uh, before. Obviously, yeah. not the bits that they dug out for giving us all those conversations they had, but strange. So, looking ahead uh, for the oh. year, I guess, do you see like anything kind of evolving with? You got you guys' world in the indie music scene because everything's changing in music. There's so many changes culturally. Do you see like opportunities for, I don't know, collaborations or do you see any innovations ahead that concern you or you're excited about or any social impact you'd like to explore? Oh, goodness. That is a loaded question. Um, we just kind of keep chugging along doing what we do. Um, I don't know really about collaborations we brian and i especially tend to like to be kind of insular like we don't really do stuff outside of the band mm -hmm. um who has that kind of time happy. right well yeah <laughs> seriously who has that kind of time <laughs> um but you know we're happy to you know share a bill with people you know or you know if, say like we and another band are you know, sharing a bill and they say, Hey, why don't you come up and play such and such with us? Or, you know, whatever, like we'll do stuff like that. But otherwise we keep just looking for good opportunities to play and not taking the bad ones, which we may have done 25 years ago. You know, you kind of take whatever you can get, but now we're a little bit more discerning in the gigs that we take. And even so we are so busy. Like I haven't seen the inside of my eyelids and I don't know how long because we're so busy all the time with all these gigs, but it's a good thing. Yeah. That's nice. You know? That's a nice problem. It is. And you know, like when, at the height of COVID, you know, when we first went into lockdown and everything for years, I had said to Brian, what would we, what would life be like if we didn't have a band? What the heck would we do with ourselves? And then the lockdown came and we just, you know, walked around the house bumping into walls. We didn't know what we were doing. We didn't know what to do with ourselves. It was really weird. And thankfully, out of that did come the new album. That's nice. And it's good. I, I've listened to bits of it. Um, and does did you include the cover, um, the and These boots. boots Are Made For Walking? Yep. Yeah, it's the last song on the album. Yeah. Yeah, it's nice. I need to go back and listen to it some more. I didn't ha I didn't make the time this morning to go back. I, I tried yeah. to, to do that, but I felt... <laughs> I, even though it's the first time we we you and I have spoken, but mm -hmm. I, I suppose I felt like okay, I know what these guys are about. I've talked to Joshua. I heard the stuff. I know what's going on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, hey, man, it was really a pleasure talking with you. I hope it wasn't. Uh, I hope it was relaxed. You'd express some yeah <laughs> nervousness about it, which I made me always makes me laugh. But you know, well, because I, I don't usually do these things by myself. Yeah, so. and just for anyone who's listening, who's either wants to or has been trying to get on. Uh, you know who's uh yeah has tried to get on here it's like i don't like talking to more than one person at a time it's it's a uh, yeah it's um it's a little challenging when you're not in a room together and zoom just it's not great for that and it's yeah. a pain in the butt for editing so don't ask me if i can interview you and your bandmates whoever's <laughs> listening at the same time <laughs> yeah i know that makes sense well, I really appreciate you coming on. It was fun. Good luck with the Thank Beatles you. tribute show. I hope you guys sell <laughs> a ton you. of albums. Uh, Thewagband.com. And Alicia Van Sant. That's pretty easy to say. Mm -hmm. That's that's correct, right? Thank, yes. Thank you for saying it correctly. Don gets it wrong all the time. What does and he I've say? I've only known him for He calls me Van Zant. He puts a Z in it. I'm like, dude, it's an S. There is no Z in there. It's just an S. <laughs> Van Sant. Alicia yeah. Van, Van Sant. I only noticed the S. Uh, consciously today i'm like oh it's a van sand that's weird where does it come from <laughs> uh it's dutch it comes okay. from the Nether netherlands which i just could not say the, the netherlands the nether world yeah the world. <laughs> nice cool great talking with you thank you you too 
If you do not yet have a website for your music, check out Bandzoogle. It was created to help musicians and bands build their website and manage direct-to-fan marketing and sales. Bandzoogle features amazing design options, a commission-free store to sell merch, music, tickets, and you get detailed fan data. And there's more. Try it free at Bandzoogle.com. Use the promo code Robonzo, that's R-O-B-O-N-Z-O, to get 15% off your first year. Thank you again for listening. If you enjoyed this episode of The Unstarving Musician, please follow us on Apple Podcasts or wherever you get your podcasts. You can also leave us feedback at unstarvingmusician.com forward slash feedback. Find links for people and things mentioned in this episode at unstarvingmusician.com. Peace, gratitude, and a whole lot of love.